She's had a very big impact on the lives of quite a few women, students in America, and as well her brothers with uh, music students. And I was 18 years old when I first encountered her style. And I was in college and somebody had put a little notice up on the bulletin board. She had studied with Bala, I think in 65 when Bala came. And my dream had always been to go around the world studying different dance forms. So I thought, oh, this is just great. And so I began to go once a week, you know, to have a private lesson. So by and by, there was advertised a summer program that Louise Scripps was going to be teaching through the American Society for Eastern Arts, and that was 1967. So I, I studied that one summer with Louise Scripps, and it was one of the beginning summer programs that the American Society for Eastern Arts put on, and they had started that program around Bala, really, but it grew to include all kinds of different uh, world music masters, amazing program. That year, Ali Akbar Khan was teaching, uh, Kodo Iraki, this very, very famous Japanese musician. There were African musicians, and it was all taking place in a fraternity house that was rented for the summer. So I learned an Aladipu, I learned a Shabdam, and I learned a little Talana. After that summer, what happened was for the recital, when we did the year end, Louise let us perform to a recording of Balama singing. And that recording went inside of me. It absolutely went inside of me. And I didn't realize exactly how deeply it did. But what Ani has said to me since, and he's really right, the form has to, you have to choose the form and it has to choose you. So in the summer of 68, I went to UCLA. And it was very intimidating. It was very intimidating. I think like many, many, many great artists, of which there are not that many like Balama, but that you know there are in the world. You think of the Frank Lloyd Wrights, you think of you know people across all um, cultures. Bala was one of those very, very top course people. Um, there's a lot of protection that goes on around them, and there's a lot of competitiveness in, in, in the dance world among women in particular. She was very, very strict, very traditional, very old school. So, in fact, I think that whole summer, I think she never spoke to me. But, in fact, I didn't even finish the summer because what happened was Balama would teach one person and everybody else could watch and everybody else could try to learn whatever they were learning. And I was there with a woman who was a bit older. She was maybe 15 years older. Nazen Chobanian was her name. And she wore a lot of bangles on her arms. And so when Bala would, you know, we would stop and she'd be teaching somebody, we would be there trying to copy. And Bala would turn around and go, and we would go, oh, I'm sorry. It took me years to figure out it was the bangles that were bothering her. To, and, and it wasn't me that she was talking to, it was my friend, but we were both there together, so I thought, she doesn't like us. So when I came back, it was 1972, I discovered that she would be at Mills College in 72, and she taught um, Natana Mardinar. And again, you know, I was very happy being at the back of the class. I bonded with my friend Masa Snyder, and the two of us were very happy, you know, sort of, looking through the cracks. You know, it's like the bull in front of the temple. There's always a bull in front of Bala's temple, right? He's always kind of looking around to get in. And, and, and that was fine with me. So I studied that summer. In 1973, she was brought to um, the University of Washington in Seattle. You know, always these programs were five days a week and we would dance from nine till 12. So. When I'm here in Chennai, I teach whoever is here. I, you know, sometimes I take on these classes and you know, teach the students. But yesterday, there were a number of them sitting around. I said, get up, get up, get up, dance. And they, after a few uh, adavus, and they worked very hard, they said, Tani, Tani. And I said, well, when we studied with Balama, we worked from 9 in the morning until noon. And there was no asking to stop for water. I don't recall we stopped for water. We didn't have water bottles. Sometimes Balama would say soda. She loved to drink soda. 
while she, you know, that was what she liked. So once in a while we would get some too, but you didn't ask, you didn't speak to her, you didn't question anything, you were just there. And she was very strict and very traditional, which I think in the end is why, because we were willing to do that, that she continued to teach us. That summer of 73, um, I remember Balama, you know, running into her, she was walking down the hall and she said, Eva, where is the bathroom? And I went, oh, I never heard her say my name before. And it never occurred to me to even think about that because being in her presence and being a student took absolutely everything you had. And I felt so fortunate to be there, to just be there. And I, you know, I, it, it, over the years I used to think I was, I was really not doing this to become a professional dancer or anything like that. I was working as hard as I could work to stay in her presence so that she would want me to be there. And eventually she did say to me, every time I'm in America, you must come. And so over the years, we developed a, you know, a closer relationship, but you could never take that for granted. Wherever she would perform, I would be there backstage with her doing her makeup. And, and I, got, I got to be, I said, Balama, because it's a big hall and people can't see your face, you need some rouge, you need some of this. She would go, you know, I taught her to like put her cheeks together and put rouge on the tops of her cheeks. And so, you know, so I became the person that was always there to help. I completely credit Balama with giving direction to my life. And it doesn't always have to do with being a dancer. And what I realized as well, the dance form, the nature of it, the fact that you have to learn rhythm, you have to learn the words, you have to learn the meaning, you have to have the acting all at once. I think literally physically, it opens all of these passages in your brain. And I have become a constant multitasker. I think it's like, you know, it is a very contemporary, uh, uh, skill that it teaches and, I, and I, I often say to myself it's why I've been successful as a producer because I've learned to multitask in this art form and to be able to separate jobs and functions. So another very 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 special thing for me was in 1976 when I came to India to spend three four months studying eventually Balama wanted me to relearn Ma Mohalahiri because that was the first thing I learned and she knew that I had not learned it properly. So she gave me to Lakshmi as her first student. And she said, Lakshmi, you choreograph that for Eva. And so in this little room right here that we're right outside of, every morning, eventually after I'd been there some time, Lakshmi, we'd go through line by line. And in the evening, I had to show it to Balama. And so I had my lesson with Lakshmi. I had all day to practice it because Lakshmi would say to me, if you don't do it well, I'm going to get in trouble. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to, oh, you know, I will try my best, you know. And so I worked really hard. And one of the things that Balama once said to me that I really super appreciated was she, she could be very cutting and not kind and, and, absolutely direct. She didn't take any prisoners. And she said to me one time that that didn't work with me, that I only worked harder if I got praise <laughs> because I drove myself so hard anyway. I worked as hard as I possibly could. And if somebody said something bad to me, it would shut me down and bring me down. And so if I got a little bit of praise, then I would find that other little bit of energy somewhere, you know? And I started to say there was only like a little handful of times where I worked so hard, all I could do was cry. You know, there's nothing more you have to give. In her artistry, I have another story about that that I'm gonna tell. So pure in her work and in her intention and she had worked so hard that nobody was gonna own that, that was not for sale. And if you didn't, I saw several times when she was teaching, students would say, oh, I can't. 
She would never say a word, but I would watch her. She would never try to teach them that again. They said they can't, done, done. You never ever say that to Balama. And one time there was a summer session at Wesleyan and I couldn't get there in time. I got there through half the summer. <clears throat> and she was teaching, I think it was Saki Avarnam. And it, it was very long and very complicated. And I got there and she said, I want you to perform this, you know, with another dancer who was, had been there the whole time. And I was like, oh my God, you want me to perform? And then it was somebody who was tall and, you know, and I'm well, short. And, 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 and Balamas, it was, I had 10 days to learn it and to perform it. And I, I knew enough to not say to her, I can't. I said to her, are you sure I can do it? And she said, don't question me, I'm your teacher. I said, okay. And I did it perfectly. Beyond anything I ever could have thought I was able to do, she knew. And sometimes you'd come to class and she'd say, sit down, don't dance today. And I'd go, no, no, why? She could completely read you as a person and understand more about what day you were having than you knew yourself. She could look into you and understand how you felt and who you were. And you never took your friendship with her for granted. You absolutely could not do that. So Balama really knew how to teach each individual person to whatever your strength was, she would develop it. And I was somebody that she could improvise with. So there would be a, an occasional time when we'd get into a story and we would play a dice game and we, you know, uh, very occasional and we would do some kind of improv improvisation together. And then you begin to think, oh, wow, you know, she, we're friends, we're this, we're that. And she would like snap you right out of that in some way that would be like, don't, you cannot take that relationship for granted. It's amazing that this small handful of American students actually lived through this experience because it's not the sort of thing that Western, and now it's spreading every, in every other culture, which is why these traditional arts are not going on. People don't want to accept that relationship, the Guru Sesha relationship. And if you were going to study with Bala, that's what it was. And there was there was no compromise. I remember inviting a friend one time to a private lesson with Lakshmi and Bala, and afterwards she said to me, you know, they're not very nice people. And I was like, really? I, I, I think they're great. And you know, so it's like, because they were strict, very, very strict, and you had to be able to take it in. And without that, I wouldn't be here doing an Alaripu in her home at this age, at this time. So I'm very, very, very grateful. When I was here two years ago and I performed um, for her 98th birthday at the Madras Music Academy, and he invited me, um, somehow at lunchtime, this place clears out and every afternoon I would have this floor to myself to practice. And there would be Vishwa and Ranga and Balama and, and you know, Lakshmi and all that. And I, and I would stand here sometimes, I would just cry and I'd go, why am I here and you're not? I don't understand, you know, I'm the, I'm the American and I, you know, I mean, just this whole thing, but, and I, and I would say to myself, how am I gonna get on stage and not be completely in pieces and nervous and everything? And then part way through this experience of practicing here, I said, oh, it's not about me, it's about the teaching. And then I calmed down, it's really about showing just being a vehicle for what I was privileged to learn from them. Till the last minute, she was trying to teach me things, and the very last thing she taught me was how to both be Shiva and Parvati in the same. And I, you know, it, it's very challenging, and it's a very difficult thing, but it's the essence of the dance, is to acknowledge your male and female parts. And then she looked at me, she said, now I'm happy. Now I'm happy. She felt that between showing me the understanding of that, of, of how to be both and how to split your body. And, and the other thing that we had worked on was the counting and the phrasing. And 
knowing that those things are so difficult to incorporate in your body. A lot of it is. And I'm actually surprised myself sometimes at how now easily I'm able to dance because I think back on how hard it was to learn. Really, really, really challenging, really difficult. And I think because of the multitasking that we talked about, the fact that, and, and the other thing was, you did not dare dance off Tala. You could make her sick. You really could make her sick. You know, she could, no, you, you, you can't. It, she wouldn't tolerate even, no, what goes on here. And, and Vishwa too, he'd say in when his teaching, when he learned, you sing a bad note, you go to hell. Yeah, it's, it's very, very old school strict, which is the, why it's so beautiful. And the fact that, they, that the family and the forms value beauty, which is something that gets so lost in the world so much, and how ancient and what those roots are. And the huge challenges for me about learning the dance, is this is Berkeley in the 60s, this is women's lib movement, this is like, was having to perform stories about maidens in love in the village. And I'm like, oh my God, how am I gonna do that? And, and I just said, you know what? If you're gonna be an actress, if you're gonna be a dancer, you need to own it. You, and now I'm absolutely comfortable with it. And you know what? Now, where I live is like a village. And the world has gotten to a place where we need to learn from those stories because we need to go back to some of that wisdom of carrying food on our heads, of serving people out of buckets, of, of bringing community together. This is so much about community. And I began to realize, wait a minute, where I thought I was learning songs and stories that were not pertinent to my life, I'm now understanding there's a lot that is, and, it's, and that knowledge that we need to have, and that we need to go back to, okay, incorporating it, incorporating some of the things that, stories that have now been brought forward from those ancient times, if we want humanity to survive. We can't keep on the course, and so I'm suddenly realizing, oh my God, I learned a wisdom that I didn't know that I was learning. <laughs>